from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of Dell Technologies World. Digital experience, brought to you by Dell Technologies. Welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technologies World 2020, the digital experience. I'm Lisa Martin and I'm pleased to welcome back a CUBE alumni and a new CUBE member to the program today. Chandamay Mandal is back with us, Director of Solutions Marketing for Dell Technologies. Chandamay, it's great to see you at Dell Technologies World, even though we are very socially distant. Happy to be back. Thank you, Lisa. And Thomas Henson is joining us for the first time, Global Business Development Manager for AI and Analytics. Thomas, welcome to the Cube. Hey, I'm excited to be here. It's my first virtual Cube. Well, 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 we better make it a good one. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're talking about AI. So, so much has changed. And Sean DeMay, the last time I saw you, we probably were sitting a lot closer together. So much has changed in the last six, seven months, but a lot has changed with the adoption of AI. Thomas, kick us off. What are some of the big things fueling AI adoption right now? Yeah, I would have to say the two biggest things right now are as we look at accelerated compute, and by accelerated compute, we're not just talking about the continuation of Moore's law, but how in data analytics, we're actually doing more processing now with GPUs, which give us faster insights. And so now we have the ability to get quicker insights in jobs that may have take, you know, taken weeks to months uh, as long as we were measuring. And then the second portion is when we start to talk about the innovation going on in the software and framework world, right? So no longer do you have to know C++ or a lower level language. You can actually do it in Python and even pull it off of GitHub and it's all part of that open source community. So we're seeing more, more folks in the field of data science and uh, deep learning that can actually implement some code. And then we've got faster um, compute to be able to process that. Sean May, what are your thoughts? thing I want to add is the explosive growth of data, and that's actually uh, fueling the AI adoption. Think of like all the smart devices we have, the uh, IoT and edge devices uh, doing data, uh, pumping data into the pipeline, uh, high resolution satellite imagery, all social media generating data. Now, all of this data are actually helping the adoption of AI because uh, now we have very granular data to uh, train the AI model, mm -hmm. make the AI models uh, much better, precise. So uh, the combination of growth in uh, data, the power of like GPU powered servers are uh, coupled with the innovations in the AI software and tools helping uh, fuel the AI growth that we are seeing today. Chandamay, one of the things that we've known for a while now is that it, it's for AI to be valuable, it's about extracting value from that data. You talked about the massive explosion in data, but yet we know for a long time, we've been talking about AI for decades, initiatives can fail. What can Dell Technologies do now to help companies have successful AI projects? Yeah, uh, so as you were saying, Lisa, what we are seeing is uh, the companies are trying to adopt AI technologies uh, to drive value and extract value from their data set. Now, the way it needs to be framed is there is a business challenge that customers are trying to solve. The business challenge gets transformed into a data science problem that data scientist is going to work with the AI technology, train the model. That data science problem gets to the data science solution, and then it needs to be mapped to production deployment as a business solution. What happens a lot of the time is the companies do not plan for how to transition from small scale proof of concept that data scientists are playing with, like a smaller set of data, to when it goes to the large production deployment dealing with terabytes to petabytes of data. Now that's where we come in. At Dell Technologies, we have end-to-end -end solutions for the, uh, for the AI solution in the customer's journey, starting from a uh, proof of concept to uh, production. And it is all seamless, modular, and very scalable. So if some of the challenges there are just starting with, with iterations, 
Thomas, question for you as business development manager, those folks that Chanda Mai talked about, the, the data scientists, the business, how are you helping them come together from the beginning so that when the POC is initiated, it actually can go on the right trajectory to be successful? No, that's a great point. And just to kind of build off of what Shonda Mai was talking about, you know, we call it that last mile, right? Like, hey, I've got a great POC. How do I get into production? Well, if you have executive sponsorship and it's like, hey, everybody was on board, but it's going to take six months to a year. It's like, whoa, 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 you're going to lose some momentum. So where we help our customers is, you know, by partnering with them to show them how to build, you know, from an IT and an infrastructure perspective, what that AI architecture looks like, right? So we have multiple solutions around that. And at the end of the day, it's about just like Sean and I was saying, you know, we may start off with a project that maybe it's only half a terabyte, maybe it's 10 terabytes. But once you go into production, if it turns out to be three petabytes, four petabytes, nobody really, you know, has the infrastructure built unless they built on those solid practices. And that's where our solutions come in. So we can go from small scale laboratory all the way to large scale production without having to move any of that data, right? So, you know, at the heart of that is power scale and giving you that ability to scale your data and no more data migration so that you can handle one PC or multiple PCs as those models continue to improve as you start to move into production. And Tom, yeah. sticking with you for a second. Oh, sorry, Chandamay, go ahead. No, I was going to add that uh, just like uh, Thomas said, right? So if you are a data scientist, you are working with this uh, data science workstations, but getting the data from uh, Dell EMC power scale, the scale out platform. And as it is growing from POC to large scale production, data can stay in place with the power scale platform. You can add nodes and it can grow to petabytes. And you can add in not just the workstations, but also uh, Dell PowerEdge servers, switches, building out our entire uh, AI ready solutions, uh, AI ready solution for your production, giving a very seamless experience from the data scientist to the IT. So, Chenamay, we'll stick with you then. I, I'm curious to know in the last six to seven months, since 2020 has gone in a very different direction than we all would have predicted our last Dell Technologies world together. What are you seeing, Chandamai, in terms of acceleration or maybe different industries? What are customers' needs? How have they changed, I guess I should say, in, the, in 2020? So uh, in 2020, uh, we are seeing the adoption of AI even more uh, rapidly. Uh, if you think about customers ranging from, uh, like, say, uh, media and entertainment industry to uh, the customer services of any organization to uh, the healthcare and life sciences where lots of uh, genome analysis going on. In all of these places uh, where we are dealing with large uh, data sets, uh, we are seeing a lot of adoption, faster processing of AI uh, technologies, giving with, uh, say, the all the research that these biosciences organizations are happening. Uh, Thomas, I know like you are working with like a customer, so can you give us a little bit uh, more example in there? Yes, um, one of the areas, you know, if we're talking about 2020, one of the things that we're seeing more and more is just the expansion of, just look at the need for customer support, right? There are more folks working remotely. There are more folks that are learning remotely. I know my child is going through virtual school. So think about your IT organization and how many calls you're having now to expand. And so this is a great area where we're starting to see innovation within AI and model building to be able to have, you know, let's call it, you know, the next generation of chatbots, right? So you can actually build these models off the data to augment those support systems because you have two choices, right? You can either, you know, you, you can either ex expand out your call center, right? For, for, for we're not sure how long, or you can use, AI and analytics to help augment, to help maybe answer some of those first baseline questions. The great thing about customers who are choosing PowerScale and Dell Technologies as their partner is, they already have the resources to be able to hold on to that data that's going to help them train those models to help. So Thomas, whenever we're talking about data and the explosions, it brings to mind compliance, protection, security, and we've seen ransomware really skyrocket in 2020 just you know the other week there was the va was hit um i think there was also 
social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, 235 million users because there was an unsecured cloud database. So that threat vector is expanding. How can you help customers accelerate their AI projects while ensuring compliance and protection and security of that data? Really, that's the sweet spot for PowerScale when we're talking with customers, right? You know, built on 1FS with all the security features in mind. And I, I too came from the analytics world. So I remember in the early days of Hadoop, where, you know, as a software developer, we didn't need security, right? We, you know, we were doing researchy stuff. Um, but then when we took it to the customer and, and, and we we're pushing to production, well, what about all the security features we need? Same thing for artificial intelligence, right? We want to, we want to make sure that we're putting those security features and compliances in. And that's where, you know, from, from an AI architecture perspective, by starting with 1FS at the heart of that solution, you can know that you're protecting for, you know, all the enterprise features that you need, whether it be from compliance to data strategy to backup and recovery as well. So when we're talking about big data volumes, Chandamai, we have to talk about the hyperscalers. Talk to us about, you know, they each offer Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, hundreds of AI services. So how does Dell help customers use the public cloud, the data that's created outside of it, and use all of those, use the, the right AI services to extract that value? Yeah, now, as you mentioned, all of these hyperscalers, they differentiate with uh, services like uh, AI, ML, uh, deep learning technologies, right? And as a, a customer, you want to leverage best of all the, uh, all the cloud has to offer and not stuck with one particular cloud provider. However, we are talking about terabytes of data, right? So if you are happy uh, with doing service A from cloud provider, uh, say Google, but you want to move to or uh, take advantage of another service of, from Azure, it comes with a very high uh, migration risk and time it will take to move the data itself. Now, that's not good, right? Uh, as the customer, we should be able to leverage best of breed uh, cloud services for AI and for that matter for anything across the board. Now, how we help customers is you can have all of your data, say, in a managed, uh, managed cloud service provider running on PowerScale, uh, but then uh, you can connect from this managed cloud service provider directly to any of the hyperscalers. You can connect to AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, and even like even uh, the in-place analytics that PowerScale offers, you can run uh, those app, I mean, run those cloud AI services directly on that uh, data simultaneously from these three. And I'll add like one more thing, right? Uh, these deep learning technologies need GPU powered servers, right? And cloud, even within like one cloud is not a homogeneous environment. Like sometimes you'll find a US East has more uh, GPU powered servers, but like you are in West and same for uh, other providers. Now with our Dell, our technologies cloud power scale for multi-cloud, power scale is sitting outside of those hyperscalers connected directly to uh, any of this. And then you can burst into different clouds take advantage of our spot instances uh, and uh, like leverage all the GPUs, not from one particular service provider, but all of those the hyperscalers. So those are some examples of the uh, work we are doing in the multi-cloud world for AI. So that's data, you're talking about data there, so power scale for multi-cloud, for data that's created outside the public cloud. But Thomas, what about for data that's created inside the cloud? How does Dell help with that? Yeah, so this year we actually released a solution uh, in conjunction with GCP. So um, within Google Cloud, you can have PowerScale for 1FS, right? And so that's that native, native feature. So, you know, goes through all the compliance and all the features um, within being a part of that um, GCP natively. Um, so it counts towards your credits and your G, uh, Google uh, billing as well, but it's still all the features that you have. 
And so we've been running some actually some benchmarks. So we've got a couple of white papers out there that kind of detail, you know, what we can do from an artificial intelligence perspective. In fact, the Shandamai's example where he was talking about, you know, being able to use more and more GPUs. So we, 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 we've done that to, to run some of our AI benchmarks against that. And then also, you know, jumped into the Hadoop space because, you know, that's one, one area from a power scale perspective customers are really interested. Um, and they have been for years. And then really the, the awesome portion about this is for customers that are looking for a hybrid solution or maybe it's their first kickoff to it. So back, Lisa, to those uh, compliance features that we were talking about, those are still inherent within that native um, Google G GCP 1FS version. But then also for customers that have it on-prem, you can use those same features to burst your data into um, your Isilon cluster using all the same native tools that you've been using for years within your enterprise. Got it. So starting out for PowerScale for Google Cloud. Chandra, back to you, kind of wrapping things up here. What are some of the things that we're going to see next from Dell from an AI solutions perspective? Uh, yes. So we are working on many different interesting projects, uh, ranging from uh, the latest uh, NVIDIA surfers that they have announced, uh, DGX A100. And in fact, two weeks ago at uh, GTC, uh, NVIDIA announced big super pods with uh, DTX A100 uh, servers. We are part of that ecosystem and we are working with uh, the leading uh, solutions to benchmark our AI environments for all the uh, storage, uh, ensuring like we are providing like all the throughput and scalability uh, that we have to offer. Thomas, finishing with you from a customer perspective, as we talked about so many changes this year alone, as we approach calendar year 2021, what are some of the things that, that Dell is doing with its customers, with its partners, the hyperscalers, NVIDIA, for example, that you think customers are really going to be able to truly accelerate successful AI projects? Yeah, so the first thing I'd like to talk about is what we're doing with the DGX A100. So this month at GTC, you saw our solution um, for our reference architecture for the DGX A100 plus uh, power scale. So you talk about speed and how we can move customers' insights. I mean, some of the numbers that we're seeing off of that are, are, really, are, are really amazing, right? And so this is, gives the customers the ability to still you know, take all the features and use, use Isilon and 1FS um, like they have in the past, but now combined with the speed of the A100, still be able to speed up how fast they're using those, um, building out those deep learning models. And then secondly, with that, that gives them the ability to scale too. So there's some features inherent within this reference architecture that allow for you to make more use, right? So bring more data scientists and more modelers, GPUs, because that's one thing you don't see um, data scientists turning away, right? They're always like, hey, you know, I mean, this this project here needs needs a GPU. And so, you know, from a power scale 1FS perspective, we want to be able to make sure that we're supporting that so that as that data continues to grow, which, you know, we're seeing as one of the large factors whenever we're talking about artificial intelligence is the scale for the data. We want them to be able to continue to build out that data consolidation area for all these multiple different workloads that are coming in. Excellent, Thomas, thanks for sharing that. Hopefully next time we get to see you guys in person and we can talk about a customer who has done something very successful with you guys. Chandamay, always great to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. For Chandamay Mondal and Thomas Henson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE's coverage of Dell Technologies World 2020.